Who knew healing magic could be so much fun? In this world, it's not just about saving lives, it's about doing it in the most unconventional, uproarious way possible. Dramatic turn when he bumps into two of his classmates after school on a rainy day. The next thing they know, they are transported to a magical world through a mysterious and powerful spell. But there's a small problem. Yuzato was swept up in the vortex by accident. On top of that, he discovers that he possesses a rare talent for healing magic and ability that is highly sought after in this new realm. In order to survive, Yuzato must join forces with the rescue team, a group of tough and ruthless thugs, and endure their grueling training. Follow Yuzato as he learns the wrong way to use his healing powers in this odd and humorous otherworld fantasy filled with excitement and action. The story begins with an average high school kid named Yuzato frowning over the student council couple Ryosun Kazuki and Inukami Suzun while waiting for the rain to stop before going back to his home. Eventually, they explain that they aren't dating on their way back home as they shared their spare umbrella with Yuzato. Suddenly, they get summoned into another world as heroes by the king of the kingdom of Lingul to defeat the demon king. It gets found that Yuzato was just dragged along with Ryosun and Inukami since he didn't hear a bell ringing in his head. When the court assigns Mage Welsi to measure everyone's aptitude, they find out that Yuzato has the potential to use healing magic, which is considered the rarest in the world they were in. But unfortunately, just the moment they think of protecting Yuzato from Rose, the leader of the Kingdom Rescue Squad barges into the hallway of the King, and Ryerson makes a mistake by telling the truth in front of her. Nobody in the Kingdom trusted the method of Rose when it came to her training method, but she is the one who led her squad to save the lives of many soldiers when the demons attacked. When Yuzato reached the Kingdom Rescue Squad, it was full of bandits like men who respected Rose as their big sister, and everyone introduced themselves to Yuzato. Yuzato gets a room with Tong, who seems rather distressed regarding healing magic. Yuzato was still determining what would happen to him the next day as they would start training for him very soon. When Ryosun and Inukami are having their morning discussion discussing their future endeavors, Princess Syria comes up asking them about Yuzato, and even she is distressed after knowing that he was called in by the Kingdom Rescue Squad worrying about their training process. In the afternoon, Ryosun and Inukami end up barging into the Kingdom Rescue Squad without even informing everyone and find out the diary that had carried the thoughts of Yuzato as he kept on going through his days in the training. Suddenly, they get called by Sigrus as Yuzato, and Rose come back from their outdoor training to train across the hedge. The uncanny sight of Yuzato's training shocking everyone since Rose kept increasing the heavy weight on his back as time progressed. The princess also came to meet Yuzato. Wyerson and Inukami were inspired after seeing Yuzato doing great in the unknown place when all they did was worry about him as the day continued. The hellish training of Rose increased the physical abilities of Yuzato, and according to her, his sole goal was to treat the injured who had been left on the battlefield. The sudden travel with Rose went through a market as he continued carrying a heavy backpack as they finally reached the city's outer walls. It seems that they are about to go to the outside area in the forest where the monsters dwell regularly, and they set up a camp while Rose instructs him to hunt a grand grizzly. Even though Yu Zeto refused to accept his quest initially, he had to comply because he couldn't return to the kingdom without ending his quest. Suddenly, a white bear starts chasing him down as he continues to run off. But the moment he gathers his strength to fight back against the grizzly, the number increases in the pack and becomes a total of three them instead of one. 
Finally, when he jumped into the water to escape their grasp, the backpack became heavy and started pulling him down, so he fought back the momentum to jump back onto the land. Yuzato heals an injured rabbit in the forest, which helps him detect danger from a distance as the grizzly bears are still looking for him everywhere. When he finally opened up his backpack, he discovered it was full of portable food and equipment to camp outside in the forest. Soon he and the rabbit reached the nest of grizzlies to defeat the alpha bear, but the sight of it playing with its cub makes him soft. When he witnesses a massive snake in the forest, he knows that he has to get out of the forest really soon but it soon gets worse as he notices the dead bear carcasses inside the forest, which was definitely done by the snake. Yuzata's motive inside the forest quickly changes as he notices the bear cubs crying for their dead parents in front of his eyes and sets his target on the huge snake. Meanwhile, the Demon King was concerned about their winning rate being manipulated in the battle against the humans because of Rose and her army as they kept on healing the injured and sending them back out again. Even the Demon Commander and Mira feared battling against Rose for her unbelievable bravery as she fought to the death against her mentor and only lost an eye in the fight as she returned alive. But this time... Amira makes a promise to battle against Rose on her own to win the fight if the time comes. On the other hand, Yuzato ends up running into the vicious snake once again in the forest, and to save the bear cubs from its grasp, he gets wounded in the process, but when that isn't fearful enough, he also gets affected by the poison. In the end, also the bear cub joins the fight to help Yuzato and they avenged the death of the grizzly bears together. But the situation quickly changes as the snake gets up once again, but Rose arrives on the scene with the help of the rabbit from before. Also, the rabbit is a pet of Rose whom she sent to keep looking out for him, and the snake was the monster Sigrus failed to kill during the previous Demon Lord's invasion. They finally end the journey outside the forest by taking the bear cub with them on their way inside the kingdom. Yuzato woke up in his room in front of Tong, and he headed out to the bear cub they rescued yesterday to feed him an apple while naming him Bluey. Suddenly, Rose comes up to him, claiming he passed to stand on the same battlefield as her by cornering the monster snake in the forest even though his target was stolen. Also, she claimed that she was proud of him for having distinct characteristics from the usual healers, physical abilities, and a strong-willed spirit that the other two renowned healers in the kingdom couldn't achieve in their lifetime. Not only that, but also, Rose claimed that she would be on the front line with her to heal the injured soldiers since the demon army is quickly approaching as time passes. Knowing that the heroes will be there fighting for their lives against the demon army, Yuzato doesn't want to be the only one doing nothing and keep sitting on his ass. So his sole mission from now on with the Kingdom Rescue Squad is to bring the person who is about to be killed even if they have to steal them away to save their life. Yuzato finally feels like he has become a true member of the rescue squad, and the next step of his training begins from that instant. When his first training with the bear above on his back ends in the afternoon, Rose gives him the next task, claiming that he will have to run around the city to do the same thing while she goes meeting the king in his castle to answer to his summoning. The king was concerned about the report made by the escorts who tagged with Kazuka during his training, as there were fewer monsters than usual in the plains. Rose was also bothered by the report, so she wanted to scout near the borders right across the river to guarantee the area's safety before the training began. However, she didn't want to forget those guys who died battling against the Demon King and blamed only her arrogance for their deaths. 
The only way for her to forget her scene is to create subordinates that won't die. And she has finally found the embodiment of her ideal. Yuzato. The next day when Yuzato was running around the town carrying Bluey on his head, people were looking right at him with their usual glances like they were expecting him. Then, some guy behind him suddenly starts calling him while running, but he collapses on the ground, losing unconsciousness. When Yuzato finishes healing him, he introduces himself as Olga Fleur of the Kingdom Rescue Squad and claims that even though he is a healer himself, his healing magic only works on others, not on himself that much. His sister, Olruru, is also a healer, just like him, and suddenly, a concerned mother enters the scene with her wounded child while someone is looking at Yu Zeto from the dark corner. Yu Zeto helps the mother carry her child to the clinic where he meets Olga's sister Olruru as they begin the treatment. The amazing healing magic of Olga was quite different from Yuzata's one, who transferred the mana into the patient's body to heal from the inside. Before Yuteso takes his leave from the place, Olga expresses that he shouldn't end up hating Rose for being herself and gets surprised by seeing the optimism of Yuzato. He felt like Rose had finally met the one she always needed to meet. She would not be alone on the battlefield the next time she stepped. When Yuzato is about to begin his run again, a half-beast girl comes up to him and lends him her vision of the future, claiming that the future can be chosen by him. But, unfortunately, in the vision, he sees all the soldiers of Lingle dead under the feet of the Demon King, and the girl claims that he must return the vision, calling it a favor. After listening to her, Yuzato feels like it was precognition and runs like hell, forgetting about his training and Bluey. Meanwhile, Demon King's commander Amira is busy building a bridge along with her demon army when the second core soldier of the demon army comes around, nagging her around. They were just one step away from completion, and suddenly, the arrival of an unknown entity came down, crashing on their plan, just like a cursed meteor. The bridge gets blown off by none other than Rose who was there to keep an eye on the plans of the Demon King. She now believes that she will have to work and speed up faster if the Demon Soldiers are catching up in this speed. Yuzato is still living in a real-life nightmare after seeing the vision from the little half-beast girl in the town as he gets awakened by Rose herself. She claims that Hiro Kazuki has already finished his training and will have to tag along with Hiro Suzun since the king requested him to be there personally. They considered it last minute training in case they needed a healer, and Yuzato was permitted to bring Bluey with him if he wanted to. Suzun was surprised to see Yuzato after getting informed by the castle guard that some other person would be tagging along with her on the journey. Rose decides to warn Suzun about the uncertainties that could bring in the training and claims that she was allowed to be reckless to some extent. Healing magic is useful, but she shouldn't consider it omnipotent because it doesn't work on a dead person. Yuzato was surprised to see Rose warning her because she had never done something like that for anyone. On their way, Suzun claims that Kazuki was able to pull through his training but after being tired out by the whole training, he has been sleeping since the previous day. Yuzato introduces his bear cub to Suzun, and just when she is about to pet him with her hands, she gets slapped away by the bear even though he is sleeping. Suddenly, they meet a bunch of bandits on their way to the vicinity of the plains, where the monster population is truly high. The bandits were amazed to see Yuzato carrying around a blue grizzly cub like Bluey on his back. But since Bluey is a cub, they decided to run into Yuzato and the others with their weapons. But they get intercepted by the lightning magic power of Suzun, 
and Yuzato is ready in case one of the bandits dies from the magic's attack. Unfortunately, when they are busy beating up the bandits, a herd of full boars runs into them, and one of them knocks out Yuzato and Suzun both when he tries to save Suzun from the attack. She instantly gets unconscious, and just when he finishes using his healing power on her, they fall into a river with a waterfall. They somehow manage to drift to shore, and Yuzato passes out while dragging her up, but wakes up instantly while she is making a speech. They didn't know how far they were from where they went missing, but they had to make a camp anyways to live in the dark for the night. At night, when they finish eating after making a fire and catching fish, Suzune expresses that she has no intention or wish to return to the previous world as she finally has the chance to release herself. Yuzato has the same thought as her since he was able to change his life in the new world. Suzune truly wanted to protect the country so that it could one day become where she truly belongs. The conversation led Suzune to express her thoughts about having a closer relationship with Yu Zeto, which makes him go to sleep after being embarrassed. The next morning when they start their journey, they meet Venom Monkeys, and one of them ends up biting her hand, thinking that it will be safe, which later gets healed by Yu Zeto instantly. Suddenly, they see Bluey and the castle guard running into them as Suzune makes Yu Zeto feel like she is in a different dimension than she existed. Yu Zeto and Suzune reached the king safely after their disaster, and the king apologized to everyone for rushing their training, but he had other ways to face their incoming problem. Rose added the information of the Demon Lord's army building their bridges at the edge of their borders to cross over the river and also informed them of the destruction of it, which might help them to prepare for a few days more. Kazuka came running to Yuzato and Suzun since he worried about their safety and explained that Suzun trusts Yuzato with her life, knowing he wouldn't let her die that easily. When Yuzato comes into Rose's room after freshening up, Rose informs him that they will not head out in the early stages of the battle as Tong and the others will cover for them, knowing that he will be an easy target for the demon army. He gets officially given the Kingdom Rescue Squad uniform, which is waterproof and dirt-proof, as he looks worthy of it after wearing it. But the air in the room gets heavy as soon as Rose states that he should value his life more than anything, so he shouldn't be sacrificing his own life over anything. When Yuzato is about to sleep at night, Kazuka calls him from outside and informs him that the battle with the Demon Lord's army has already started. He claims that he has run away from the castle as he is afraid of fighting knowing that the demon army will also intend to finish him off. Yuzato stated that even though he fights as a hero beside him on the battlefield or not, they will still remain friends, and that is a fact. The strong will of Yuzato makes Kazuki change his mind about leaving the battlefield, and even though he doesn't know if he will be enough as a hero, he wants to help his friend Yuzato and Suzun. They promise to save the country and its people from the grasp of the demon army as Kazuki prepares to leave for the castle to join as a hero once again. But, on the other hand, Suzune looks at them from afar and gets noticed by Yuzato. Yuzato states that he doesn't want him and Suzune to fight for their lives against the demon army, knowing they shouldn't risk their lives. However, he wanted her to know that he would respect their wishes to leave the battlefield if they wanted to. The next day, the news of the demon army lord's attack spreads throughout the kingdom by order of the king. They aim to intercept the army, with Kazuki and Suzun taking the vanguard under Commander Sigrus. 
Rose makes a speech in the hall room of the Kingdom Rescue Squad for his men and orders Oruru and Yuzato that they shouldn't get careless since it will be their first war. The bridge between the Demon Army's own and the Kingdom came close to finally finishing, and the fierce armored general of the Demon King was desperate to fight. Even though Amira was well known about the Kingdom Rescue Squad, the army general felt they won't be a match for him, considering that they were humans. When Amira considers the men of Rose as monsters, the general gets fired up, thinking that he will finally enjoy the battle because they will satisfy him on the battlefield with their skills. The time for the battle finally came, and Yuzato asked for Rose's advice about the Demon Lord's army since it was her second time fighting it. Even though the demons looked like humans with horns and tan skin, they possessed a superhuman level of physical strength and dark magic. Rose decides to boost his self-confidence by praising his strength as he takes his time to train to face the calamity in front of them. Suzun and Kazuki show up to meet him before they go forward to the front line of the king's army under the guidance of the elite army. Suzun claims that she has found her real self after entering the new world, as she is not an honor student anymore and is not at a loss from her previous life. The change she achieved after going missing with Yu Zato is noticeable in the eyes of Kazuki and she claims that she has a reason to make it back. The elite army captain makes the magic squadron go to the front line for the sake of their kingdom of Lingal as the demonic army presents itself on the battlefield. Kazuki and Suzun realize that fighting with the opposition is their only option, and Suzun takes the lead, flashing her lightning magic and crashing down on the opposition. Yuzato and everyone from the Kingdom Rescue Squad could hear the battle begin as they were in charge of covering the injured, but their turn to escape was available in front of them if things started to look too bad, according to Rose. So Rose orders her men, including Tong, to go forward as she and Yuzato will head out to the front lines once the time passes. Yuzato was vastly worried about his friends, and Tung's men kept on bringing in wounded soldiers to be cared for by Yuzato. The wounded soldier of the king's army talks about a huge black monster, and the description made by the woman gets noted in Yuzato's head. The black armored monster in the demon army squad keeps executing the soldiers like they are nothing but ants in front of him. He continues to look for a bigger challenge, getting no excitement, thinking there is no need for him on the battlefield. Just the moment a wounded soldier in the King's army starts moving around talking on his own in fear, it gets noticed by the monstrous Black Knight. The instant he is about to finish him off, the wounded soldier goes missing making him realize that Amira was right when she talked about the troublesome beings called kidnappers in the human army. On the other hand, the wounded soldier gets saved by Tung's companion as he carries him inside the tent of the Kingdom Rescue Squad. Finally, Rose realizes it is her and uses it as time to get back on track in the front line as she leaves the tent in the care of Olga and Oruru while heading out with Yuzato. On their way, Rose explains that she will teach him a lesson on how to overcome the war since he doesn't know how to do something like take a life. Yuzato thinks of the information regarding an entity of an enemy clad in black armor that uses some troublesome magic as they head on. He promises that he will not let anyone die as long as they are within his reach while Suzun and Kazuk efface the monstrous armor being discussed by everyone on the battlefield. The moment the human army goes head on with the armor being slashing their swords inside him, the magic released by him gets released like spears toward the human army. Also, the reversal of dark magic coming out of the entity makes the soldiers bleed, who attack him abruptly as they fall to the ground. 
Kazuki and Suzun keep standing flabbergasted, witnessing the overpowered entity before them, not realizing what they should do at first. Meanwhile, Yu Zeto uses her flexible movements against the demon army as they can't land any of their targets on her while he escapes with wounded soldiers. The sight of him floating in the air with two armored soldiers impresses them all, as they couldn't do anything even after ganging up on him at once. The scene of dead soldiers in front of him reminds him of the vision given by the little half-beast girl which pains him continuously. He worries about his friends as some demon soldier runs into him, trying to slash him with his sword, but he gets saved by a soldier. The soldier then informs him about the front-line situation with the armored monster as Yu Zeto starts running to reach their location. Suzun and Kazuka take on the armored monster while leaving the others to the normal soldiers. Unfortunately, when Kazuki uses his magic on the monster, the dark reversal magic also works on him, which takes him down while leaving no wound or anything on his armor, hitting straight inside his internals. Suzu notices that the other soldiers face the same thing, and the place of the body they hit on the monster ends up hitting them in the end, reflecting their own attack on them. The realization of Suzun amazes the armored monster, and even after realizing the situation, Suzun hits the monster with her lightning magic while keeping it minimal. After sealing the monster's vision, Kazuki and Suzun attack him outside his field of visual, thinking that it will work, but it surely doesn't since the attack was reflected on them. But not the attack that Suzun did on his back. And while Kazuki was buying time distracting the monster, Suzun made a surprise attack, slashing his insides with her sword surprisingly. Unfortunately, the moment she thought the attack would not get reflected, she fell down, bleeding on the ground pretty quickly, while Kazuki faced the same fate in the hands of it. The black armored monster explains that the armor that he is wearing is made out of mana which acts on his real body like a barrier. So there was no point in attacking surprisingly from the beginning. So instead, he stood there thinking that it had always been like this, untouchable from everyone, including the demons or humans, even his own parents. Just the moment the back knight is about to finish off wounded Suzun, Yu Zeto enters the scene yelling as he makes an overpowered punch on the Black Knight with all the force and mana built into his fist. The entry of Yu Zeto felt like a hurricane to the Dark Knight as he was desperate to save his friends while Kazuki was lying on the ground wounded along with injured Suzun. However, he quickly starts healing all of them, pulling Suzun out from the brink of death and healing the hole in his body made by the enemy's sword. The Dark Knight throws the sword in Yuzata's way when he is busy healing his friend and moves at the right moment. The break in the armor of the Dark Knight was quite visible, and the person inside was actually a woman. On the other hand, Suzun couldn't help but wonder how the punch made by Yuzato broke the armor since the demon armor is made up of magic and a powerful spell providing protection reflecting the attacker's hit on the attacker. Even though Yu Zeto didn't want to fight, the situation made his move in a certain direction, with only one option in his hands. The coating of healing magic gave him the boost to move forward as each hit continued to break the armor and make it flabby. The spear coming out of Dark Knight's armor goes through the hands of Yu Zato in one slice, but it somehow gets melted and transformed into slime as the magic didn't work out. Suzun couldn't help but wonder what was happening since the Dark Knight couldn't reflect any attack and was breaking on its own with force made by Yu Zato's strikes. Finally, the Dark Knight gets out the sword made out of mana but Yuzata's confidence breaks through the demon guard as the woman in the armor falls down on the ground. 
He notices that it is just a girl inside the armor of Dark Knight as the Demon Army soldiers continue to wonder what just happened as they didn't expect to see the end like that. However, his healing magic was on a whole different level and he continued to heal everyone injured on the battlefield while chatting with Suzune. Kazuki regains consciousness, and he can't help but wonder how his friend Yuzato has defeated the infamous Dark Knight, and his wounds are fully healed. He notices the ongoing battle and wants to join the Omi's front line. Get ready for round two of hilarity and hijinks. Yusato is back with even more unconventional healing magic antics in part two. However, they must also imprison the woman who got out of the armor, as the commander will decide her fate. Rose soon enters the scene as she approaches Yuzato and takes him back to the camp since the battle has calmed down a fair bit as they will deploy more soldiers soon. The news of Dark Knight losing gets spread into the demon camp, and Amira is shocked after hearing that. Also, it wasn't Rose who defeated her and some boy wearing the same uniform as her. She orders Yu Gluck to call Balzinisk back after deciding to retreat with the army realizing that Sigrus is still alive and well while they don't have a healing magician. They notice the heroes coming face to face prepared with their weapons and magic to face their battalion Hodon. Meanwhile, Yuzato gets busy healing the injured soldiers on the battlefield that got carried into their camp. Rose was quite proud of him for fulfilling his duties of saving the heroes from the demon army, and the appreciation coming out of her mouth made him cry with happiness. He finally lost his conscience on Rose's shoulder when the tiredness hit him as he was worn out from the battle. Yuzato woke up after three straight days, but the end result of the battle was quite great as everyone in the rescue squad came safe from the battle. Moreover, the celebration and happiness after the temporary victory against the demon army spread throughout the country proving the value of the rescue squad. In addition, Yuzato gets a medal of honor to prove his involvement in the battle, saving many knights' lives. He was shaken by the suspense when the event went down, and he soon gets called by the king again. On the way, he gets greeted by the commanders bowing down in front of him for his help in the battle saving countless people's lives but Yuzato claimed they were still living because of each other in humbleness, which amazed the commanders. Yuzato was called in because of the demon woman who was captured by the knights when he defeated her and revealed that she gave in quite easily. Not only that, but also, she has given up a lot of valuable information to them, which might help them in their next move for not being loyal to the demon army. Her only condition for future help was to meet with Yuzato, and she was extremely persistent in making her point. Yuzato wonders what she will tell him since he was the person who took her down, and the Knights of the King needed the information on the Demon King's army leader's magic type, so they didn't have any way other than complying with her. Yuzato couldn't help but agree with their proposition thinking there was no other way of solving the problem, and Suzune came along. He thought that the armor on her had broken up permanently, but he became concerned after realizing that the armor added up on its own after she gained consciousness. After reaching the prison of the Dark Knight, Yuzato wanted to heal her properly, guessing that her internals might be damaged from the attack. She couldn't help but wonder how the humans were using the healing magic against them as they are only able to use healing magic. She realized it was her fault to underestimate Yuzato for his abilities. All her pain was resolving inside her as if it had never existed in the first place, and the magic out of Yuzato felt so warm on her. She got out of the armor requesting him to keep his hand on her face as she didn't want to let go of the warmth. 
All she learned was the kindness coming out of Yuzato as she cried in pleasure. But on the other hand, Yuzato is still clueless about why the half-beast girl in the market showed him the vision even when the battle ended peacefully. On the way, he suddenly notices the girl and runs up to her. The little girl was surprised to see him alive and added that she wanted to collect the payment she needed for her mother. When she was about to explain what she was about to say, Suzun couldn't understand what was going on and got even more puzzled after listening to Yuzato about the vision she helped get through him. The girl introduced herself as a Marco, a fox of the beast folk, and she was curious to meet him after his healing magic. She claimed that she needed to show him the vision that he had seen to make him realize that the country was in great trouble. She wanted to make him understand that the country would be hopelessly getting destroyed without him. Suzun agreed with her as even she and Kazuki were saved by himself alone, and she was the only reason they got saved. The girl has the magic to foresee the future, and since the beast folk is looked down upon as a race by the others, she can't easily share her opinion with anyone. However, the country's no discrimination rule made her so impressed that she was looking for a way to save the country with the help of someone. A Marco reveals that her mother is sick in a weird way, as she keeps sleeping and doesn't wake up. Only a certain healing magic can wake her up, but she couldn't find anyone to do so, as she was discriminated against. Also, Rose was the person who was against her companions helping her since she could never trust her words, and Yuzato was the only person who looked like he would. The foreseeable vision revealed that he would save the country and even help her mother. As a Marco was the reason he could save the country and his friends simultaneously, he promised to help her. Yuzato leaves Suzun and Amarco while he gets out to get permission from the king, as Suzun focuses on her because of her cuteness. Amarco explains the situation to her more deeply as she is helpless if her mother doesn't wake up and adds that she can foresee the future in half a year or a whole year. The foreseeing ability is unique to her bloodline as she can do something like this and only her mother. When Yuzato reached Troes with the information, she felt quite problematic since mixing up with the beast folk could go sideways for them. The worst case scenario the country will face is going on a war against the beast folk, which they can't risk anyway. Rose made sure that she couldn't allow this to happen without the permission of the king, and he had to get some training to face any incoming danger to be fit for it. Meanwhile, Suzun was busily foreseeing the future to see what would happen soon as they would have to wait for the discussion with the king. The Marco was finally at peace as Yu Zeto was trying her best to help her escape the situation, and he was also glad that she was the only reason the humans were saved. Everyone in the town is glad that Yu Zeto has saved them as they keep coming at him appreciating his existence as he gets outside with Suzun. The training with Rose begins again, but this time it isn't about healing magic anymore, and he will soon be able to heal more complicated conditions. This time they were about to train combat with each other, which would be their next step since the wounds affected by a curse will never be healed once he faces more impressive demons in the future. Learning how to dodge is necessary for him to complete, and he should take his pieces of training more seriously to face the enemy. He couldn't help but wonder how to dodge the attacks while getting punched by Rose to get him more used to it. When he wakes up from his unconscious state, Rose makes him go on for another round again as he keeps looking at her hopelessly, knowing that she will make him go through it no matter what happens. Finally, 
Yuzato gets up as his training in hell again begins for the betterment of the humans and the country. The story continues the next day when Usato is seen having a chat with the Black Knight, while she is forbidden to go outside as she is locked up in a jail cell-like place. It seems that Usato is talking about the captain to her, explaining the whole theory around her. He keeps on elaborating on the facts about her brutality. When it came to training, it just feels like he is there to train his toughness at this point, which feels like an uninteresting topic to talk about for her. She doesn't seem to realize why he would keep blabbering on his own like this, while she is vastly confused about what he is chasing after this whole time. When the situation gets directed toward his opinion, Usato ends up asking her what she would do, starting from her current point of view. Still, it is true that none of the things are in her grasp currently, so she isn't the one who can decide her fate. Usato seems to be in deep thought, and the Black Knight feels like he should just get away from herself for a while, which he does as it seems like a favorable option for both of them. Usato seems distracted by her execution announcement, as he doesn't know what to make of it. Still, he knows that her death will not do any good to him, and he will hate that if it happens someday. At that moment, Kazuki was training in the garden, while Princess Saria was watching closely from afar, as she could notice that he had been trying his best to get better after the battle ended. When Saria and Kazuki start chatting, it gets interrupted by Usato. Kazuki starts asking him about his mission to head to the Beast Folk Nation to help that Beast Girl. Kazuki seems to be having positive vibes from the whole situation. Still, Usato points out that only the king will be deciding the final decision. Princess Saria listens to them and says that his request will most likely be granted, which makes Usato happy. It seems that their effort to win over their recent winning against the Demon Army has made a lot of amends on behalf of the kingdom. Even Kazuki realizes the potential of Usato, as it is quite believable that they would have been losing the fight without his assistance. Before leaving, Usato creates a messy situation for Kazuki by teasing him for the fact that he has been hiding from Saria, that he almost died on the battlefield. Usato gets into deep thought about doing something good for Amako, as he has to deliver the letter on his own, while the Black Knight is wondering what good. She will do even if she gets out of the prison she is in right now. Also, some noticeable changes can be seen in her the moment she meets Usato. When she is busy thinking about him, Rose enters the room, which makes the Black Knight realize that she must be the captain Usato was talking about. Just upon entering the room, Rose claims that she will be given two choices in front of her. One of them is that she will continue to rot in prison, and another one is that she will be joining their side by fighting beside them like a good demon instead of an evil one. The situation changes in an instant. Rose begins tearing off all her armor by making a slight touch with her healing power, meaning that she must be stronger than Usato. She also says that since the king isn't really interested in finishing off someone, even if that person is a demon because people searching for revenge is a pain in the ass, Rose decides that she will be undertaking her demon manners course as soon as she closes off the mana stealing choker on her. The fate of the Black Knight gets sealed as Rose decides to beat her character into shape, and she soon meets up with Usato, who is busy training with his pet bear in the forest. While he is focused on running around, speaking out loud in his mind, he gets pulled back onto earth by the kick given by Rose, who is distressed by him not listening to her as she tells him to rest for one day. Soon he realizes whom Rose is carrying on her back, and he meets her eye to eye as she gets dropped on the ground by the captain. When Usato gets frustrated that she is present outside the prison, Rose points out that the demon folk is worth the effort in training. Since her magic is also sealed, she will be the one watching over her from then on. When Usato hears that the Black Knight is going to wear the mana blocking device on her, he is now relieved, and he knows what is about to come for her in the future. So he suggests she should start writing a diary each day, because she will be begging to get out of the hell she will be in soon enough. And she started writing a diary because of Usato, who pushed that onto her from day one. She began facing the wrath of Rose, which Usato had been facing for a long time, making it unbelievable for her, and making her feel like the prison was a better place for her. She couldn't help but wonder how someone like Usato got used around the captain, as none of the training she had to undergo was normal for a human to face. She started feeling like Usato might be a human and non-human, at the same time making it harder to explain. On day 9, she slacked off from her running only to find Rose and Usato fighting against each other to keep on strength training, which felt like she was seeing two titans fighting against each other. 
When Usato finally dodges the attack he was focusing on, excitement takes the better of him, and he gets kicked off again. As the girl was on the spot they were training for the day, Usato got the honor of keeping her under his own guidance from that day. He gets to know her name, Phelum, given by her parents. That night when the whole squad is having their dinner, Rose claims that the only way for Phelum to get better at the same pace is that they have to make her feel bad enough, which will help her to get better. Also, Rose states that Usato has to go to the cast the next day. He has to take Amako with him at the same time as the king is about to discuss his plans, which only makes Usato feel skeptical of what will come soon. The next day, Usato does as he is told to do so. He and Amako make their way to the king's castle, and the king finally tells them how they will progress next. The moment they present themselves in front of the king, Amako seems terrified for various reasons. The assembly starts, and the king informs everyone that he will need everyone's help in sending letters requesting the aid and cooperation of the other nations as the kingdom's chief minister, and the general has come to the conclusion that their recent battle with the demon army has cost them a lot more than ever. Also, if the kingdom rescue squad wasn't there, they would have been losing not only the war, but also, they would have lost their heroes as well. So, to take action about the whole incident, they will need to form an alliance with all the other nations to keep standing strong against the enemies. Their target is to start the letter delivery in 15 days, so they can reach as many nations as possible in the continent. Not only that, but also, the countries that refused to help them before, the letters shall be carried by notable people who can display a better resolve than most to convince them into an alliance. The duty falls onto Suzuni, Kazuki, and Usato, meaning their value is higher than all the others in the kingdom. The king apologizes for the trouble they will be facing. Still, Kazuki states that they will be obliged to hold on to their duty of saving the kingdom. Suzun seems quite excited to visit new places on the continent, but Usato is skeptical from the beginning, not realizing why the king would value him so much, even though he is just a healing magic user. When the assembly ends, the king surprises everyone by bowing down to Amako, as she has helped them graciously by lending her vision to Usato, which has saved everyone from destruction. He claims that he is ready to provide her with as much support as possible for him. Usato gets the duty to envoy the water nation Milark, which they will have to cross to reach the nation of the Beast Folk. The king leaves the duty of navigation to Alfie, a scholar currently employed by the kingdom, ready to do anything for the betterment. After checking the map, it seems that they will have to start their journey in the city of Magic Lukvis, and they will prioritize safety the most. Since Lukvis is the nation that is second to their nation in magic, their discrimination against the people and their magical abilities is heavenly. After that, Usato will have to reach Samaria, and finally, the beast folk nation for Amako. She has to be careful that they do not come face to face with the king, which is their top priority to be safe. The sense of danger lies everywhere, because not getting aid from those nations will hamper their future in every way possible since they will have to fight against the demon army sooner or later. While traveling to the Beast Folk Nation, they must be careful as it had problems being enslaved or discriminated against in recent years. Hence, it is only normal for them to be quite wary of outsiders if they suspiciously enter the nation. Everyone suggests their circle must be small as they enter the nation. Usato suggests that he would like Ark to join their journey because of his wide knowledge of things. Amako seems more distressed than ever thinking of the nation of Lukvis, because there are academies for learning magic where there are more children than grown-ups. Even though it is heard that they have healers too, they are nowhere close to Usato and his abilities for meaningful reasons. Once Amako met one of them, she got the vision saying that neither of them would be able to help them with their cause anyways, which sounded problematic to Usato. Usato meets to have a meeting with his captain, and notices that Phelim is carrying a heavy backpack to make their journey into the forest. Everyone has to undergo the same process if they join the Kingdom Rescue Squad, and Usato gets the duty of holding the fort for Rose until they return. On the other hand, Suzun meets Ark on her way as she is heading to his camp to talk to him about the Magic Academy in Lukvis, but Ark doesn't seem excited by any means. Ark states that even though it is a great place for learning magic, considering his abilities, he prefers to think that it does nothing great at all, even though all of the other guards in the kingdom think that he can become an imperial guard. More to Suzun's surprise, she is quite impressed to know that he has already chosen his escort for the journey as he made the right choice by selecting Ark. 
Before she's about to leave in peace, Ark states that Usado was heading toward the city earlier, where he is having a conversation with Olga. In the chamber, Usado decides to proceed through an experiment in which he tries to focus and concentrate the healing power to range it like Olga, but it ends up with him tearing up his hands. Olga notifies him that he shouldn't be doing something like that anymore, but the experiment ends up leaving so many questions unanswered to Usado. He knows that he will need to continue exploring from now on so he can cure the illnesses of Amako's mother and heal the others faster. On his way, he soon meets Suzune, who starts randomly discussing Ark's protagonist potential, which surprises Usato in many ways. When the public announcement about the letters was sent to each country, Usato continued training. At the same time, Ark came to spare his regards while the captain and Rose finished their expedition in the forest after ten long days. Time passes, and Usato is about to start its journey the next day. Still, he is nowhere satisfied with his magic training feeling as if it is impossible for him to reach his potential. It gets noticed by Rose, who praises him for his determination, and states that the power of healing gets stronger as the magic color gets darkened each time, making it more specialized. She also says that she was about to teach him the process herself. However, as there is still a risk that it will risk his safety, she felt it would be better for him to learn it later, not knowing that he would come up with the idea himself. Before taking her to leave, Rose states that as there are no tips to make the process better, he must continue to keep on trying, and also says that he must not hold himself up if he meets people who despise or look down on healing magic until they reach their sanity, revealing the quirky side of her once again. Rose left him motivated and puzzled simultaneously, not expecting she would put so much trust in him, setting up high expectations for him. When his master leaves and he gets busy thinking about the preparations he has to make the next day, Felim reveals herself from the trees, asking him questions about where he is about to go. When he keeps teasing her about her feeling lonely without him, Felim leaves the forest after feeling annoyed. The next day when it is time to take their leave, Usato prepares Bluey for their journey. At the same time, Amako hugs the woman she was staying with for one last time, as she believes that she might not even be able to come back once she reaches her motherland. Usato feels like something is missing in the whole setting, as Amako might not be telling him essential details about her role in the Beast Folk Nation. Usato and Amako make their way to the city, where they meet Ark and the others, including the heroes. A problematic situation comes up as soon as Ark claims that there is no way Bluey is going to get in the carriage, so he will have to ride him until they reach the end of their way. After getting inside the carriage, Usato notices that Wesley is also with them. Still, she will only stay with them until they reach Lukvis. Even though Rose wasn't there to bid them farewell, she was watching them from afar as they started making their way to their first destination. As it takes a week from the kingdom to reach Lukvis, they only encountered a few different types of demon beasts during their travel. But none of them were able to give them so much trouble, because Bluey and Amako both were acting like their protection border from the beginning. Ark notices that Usato is deeply worried about his future days in the nation of Lukvis so they decide to chat about Ark's days in the place they are about to go now. The main thing Ark worries about is the way the people of Lukvis discriminate against others with the support of the magic system at Lukvis. If that isn't enough, the nation is filled with racial discrimination. The whole subject of racial discrimination catches Usato off guard, as he could never believe that he would have to hear something so similar in the fantasy world. Ark adds that the whole nation might be against buying and selling of the demi-humans, but as they have to gather students from other continents, there will always be a vast number of people hating on the whole race painting it as the best and also the worst place to learn magic across the entire continent without a doubt. When Usato gets to know of the situation, he seems pretty upset. He decides to act neutral about the demi-humans, which proves to Ark that he is someone who treats the demi-humans as regular humans, keeping no border between them. At that moment, Amako leaves the room rubbing her eyes, stating that Suzune is the reason she wasn't able to sleep, because she continued to hug her while sleeping. Amako said she knew someone in Lukvis, and wanted Usado to also meet the person. Ark realizes that Amako feels relaxed whenever he is around, and leaves them both to guard their range so they can sleep peacefully. The next morning, Usado wakes up on Suzune's lap, making it look weird for him, and then realizes that Kazuki is the one who is responsible for that, as he didn't want Usado to wake up all of a sudden while sleeping. Soon, their eyesight fixes upon the road as soon as Ark makes an announcement, 
saying that Lukvis is just in front of them as they are about to make their arrival. Meanwhile, the students in the nearby Magic Academy continue to rush in front of their gate, assuming that the guests have arrived from the Lingle Kingdom with something about a letter from the monarch which gets noticed by a weird-looking youth. When they reach the main gate, Kazuki feels like the whole place looks like a school making it a whole lot different than the place they have been attending in real life. Soon, Elvis comes up to them with permission to enter, and they soon make their way into the city filled with magic. Before Elvis and Usato make their way to deliver the letters, he leaves the duty of watching over Bluey to Amako. It seems that most of the stores in the city are run by students making it look like some kind of part-time job in the real world. Soon, Usato realizes that Suzune is nowhere to be found. While looking for her, he stumbles upon someone who has eyes just like Amako's. As the person is wearing a hood, Usato feels like this might be the person she was talking about from the beginning. The whole thing gets underestimated by the woman under the hold, and she ends up gripping his hands with pure strength, making him worry that people more like his master exists in the world. The whole situation worsens as soon as Usato introduces himself by uttering the name of Amako, as she misunderstands that he can be someone who trades slaves for livelihood. Then it gets even worse when he claims that he is just a friend of Amako, which gets her more furious, thinking that no human can be a friend of a beast folk, considering the racial discrimination around her. She punches through the hands of Usato, getting him injured. But the moment he uses the healing magic, the whole situation kinds of cools down. The mysterious person runs away from the place as they are catching too much attention, and Usato thinks of delivering the letters instead of chasing after her. Usato notices Suzun, and they make their way to their final destination, where Usato gets startled by Halfa, appointed by their principal to guide them around the city. It gets brainstorming for Usato and the others when they realize that they know about them already, and not only that, but also some distinct details that someone cannot check out just by hearing them from someone else. Wesley makes a guess saying that Halfa must have been using the magic sight that can perceive the magical energy found within living beings and the air around them, making it look like Usato. He might be the same, except that Usato doesn't know how to use the magic sight. Usato realizes there must be something more behind Halfa than meets the eye. Suzune confirms his doubt by saying that Halfa must have been hiding something. Soon they reach the office of the principal, Gladys, and it is revealed that Wesley is someone who has graduated from the place as well. Everyone introduces themselves, and upon the end of their discussion, they begin with the debate revolving around the coordination to fight against the demons. When the introduction ends, Gladys realizes that Usato is from the same squad as Rose's, and he is present in the nation himself to paint the urgency of the matter, which she noted. But there was still another issue. She could not make the decision alone, so it was about to take more time than usual. When Halfa is called into the chamber to help them with their lodgings and school classes, Suzune gets most excited. Still, Usato tries to make the situation look easier than ever. The duty of watching over her gets handed over to Usato as she is about to cause more ruckus. As Usato is on his way to inform the others about their lodging location, he notices a nearby commotion revolving around a student lying down on the ground, presumably injured. But unfortunately, the situation isn't as easy as anyone might think. Usato realizes that the moment he notices that the kid doesn't have any injuries on them and that the kid is a healer himself makes, the situation becomes more complex than ever. On the other hand, Commander Amira of the Demon Army is getting lectured by the Demon King for the last blunder they had to face against the humans. Amira is ready to fall on her sword then and there for the failure they had to face since there is no justification for the trouble. But even the Demon King felt the surprising wrath of the humans, even though humans typically focus on money and temptations more than anything, considering the fact that the people of Lingle never change. Amira doesn't realize the punishment will be far different than what she was hoping for. She gets demoted from her position, only to overcome her failure once again to get promoted to commander soon. She is grateful to the Demon King for his kind words and promises once again to annihilate every enemy that will come to meet their eyes on the battlefield. Meanwhile, Usato gets recognized by the locals. He isn't from their city, because if he was from their local area, he would have supported bullying the kid that is lying down on the ground. He soon realizes that the people around the city are using the kid as a punching bag, just because he has healing power and can heal any time he wishes to recover. After waking up, the kid rushes away from Usato, 
and Usado starts walking in the direction of Ark, wondering if he can do anything about what he has witnessed today. When he reaches their location, Ark decides to take care of their goods in Bluey. At the same time, Usado and Amako can leave alone without worrying about anything. Usado gets concerned that he met someone so uncanny on his way to them. Still, before he is about to express anything to Amako, her anxiousness takes the better of her as she rushes into the direction of a dark alley. On their way, Usado feels like he will get attacked by the woman he met previously, if that same person is the benefactor of Amako. They soon arrive in front of a rundown house, which makes the environment gloomy as she considers the place quite convenient for them, which Usato seems to agree with as nobody would like to come near some place like that. Usato claims that he will be fine waiting for her while she focuses on meeting the person that she is looking for, but she isn't ready to listen to him as Amako needs him in there with her. Amako notices that he might be hiding something, and Usato ends up spitting all the details in front of her, knowing that he will have to do it anyways, sooner or later. When he describes the person he met in the afternoon, Amako confirms that she is the person they are about to meet, and decides to clear up the confusion by herself. Amako knocks on the door, revealing the exact monstrous figure of the mysterious woman he had met previously in the market. She shows herself carrying a broom to fight with him. When the situation doesn't improve even a bit, Usado thinks of using his healing punch that won't leave any injuries, but Amako stands in the middle of them, forbidding him to do so, and confronts him about it. The confrontation then clears up every confusion around the mysterious woman and Usado as she calms down after hearing Amako's voice. It seems that the mysterious woman's name is Kiriha, the person whom Amako was dying to meet from the beginning of their journey from Lingla. The moment the official introduction ends between them, Kiriha bows down in front of Usato to ask for his forgiveness for misunderstanding him. Amako tries to monopolize the situation by claiming that he might be scary, but he is kinder than most and Usato elaborates that she doesn't have to ask for his forgiveness, as he isn't even hurt in the first place. When the topic of healing magic gets into the conversation, Kiriha brings up the topic of the same boy whom Usato met before coming with Amako. Then, when he keeps on gazing at Kiriha to find out what kind of animal she might be, Amako notices that and calls him rude for doing that unpleasantly. Usato and Kiriha officially introduce each other after that and shake hands with the hope of friendship from then on. Kiriha realizes that she is in the middle of making dinner because her brother is about to come home soon, and she wants them to stay for dinner as a part of an apology. Usato was wondering if it will be better for him to stay in there as her brother was coming, but when Amako questions him about it, he decides to stay with her. Soon the brother comes in wondering if Usato is the person who broke down the door, but the situation gets cleared up by Amako, who then reveals herself from behind him. Q is the brother of Kiriha and he is shocked after meeting Amako so suddenly, even though he thought she might not even be alive when they last met. Amako introduces Usato as a friend, making him realize he is the fragile guy who will help her with the healing power she seeks. Also, Kiriha elaborates on the fact that Usato is different from the other healers at the academy. Q seems to have a hard time believing the words coming out of their mouths as he keeps staring at them in disbelief. Usato realizes that the guy doesn't like him even a bit, making him wonder what the reason might be. He thinks that there is a possibility that he likes Amako, but he then focuses his mind on thinking that it just might be like that because he is a human. When Usato compliments the soup that was made by Kiriha, she elaborates that this might be her first time getting complimented by some human, but Kiyu isn't ready to accept him as the person Amako and Kiriha think of him. Usato claims that he might be leaving Amako with them until he finishes his duties in the city to keep her safe, since he will be drawing attention from the townspeople. But Kiriha makes the situation favorable for Amako, as she knows she might not be interested in living away from Musato. He ends up accepting the offer, even though Kyu is skeptical of him for doing something like that, and decides to contact the inn later, where they are about to stay, and Amako seems happy with that. It reminds her of the past when Amako was trying her best to look for a healer, despite Kiriha never wanting her to keep searching. The reason they started living in the city of Lukvis started working against their will, as they found out that even though the persecution of the beast folk has been forbidden, the rate of racial discrimination never let them live in peace. Not only that, but also the fact that the humans make up most of the population that bully the beast folk painted Kiriha as an idiot, as she was expecting one of them to help her in their cause. Also, 
The stuff she said to Q about Amako doesn't make her trust Usado any better, because Kiriha doesn't feel she can trust him properly. When Kiriha and Kyo leave for their classes, Amako and Usato also leave to meet their friends back in the inn. Just upon their return, Suzune states that she would love to accompany them, but Usato tries his best to avoid having the conversation for peace. Also, Kazuki claims that they have been invited by the school principal, and he wants to meet her together in the academy. Even though Usato is skeptical about leaving Amako alone with Bluey and Ark, Suzune seems quite excited to meet the principal to learn what classes at a magic academy are like. Just upon their arrival in the academy, they all get greeted by Halfa, who is waiting for them and is eager to show them around his classes. When they enter the academy, they all stumble upon the seniors performing a joint training session with the juniors. Halfa wanted to know if they are also interested in joining them. Usato meets Kiriha and Q eye to eye, which is noticed by Halfa. He is surprised that they didn't harm him, as everyone who tries to get acquainted with them gets hurt in the end. Suzun tried her best to convince Usato to introduce her to them, but he decided to avoid the confrontation. When the introduction in the training hall starts with the help of Halfa, one of the students recognizes him from the crowd as he points out, stating that he has seen Kiriha punching him the previous day. When one of the students wanted them to demonstrate their strength in magic, Suzune raises her hand with approval, which leaves Usado and Kazuki puzzled as they are skeptical of her when it comes to holding back. The demonstration of strength goes the way they hoped it would go as she turns the training dummy into ashes. Kazuki goes after that when the show finishes. Instead of going for weapons, he chooses only a certain kind of ranged magic that surprises everyone because it is impressive. The students do not leave Usato from questioning. The moment he introduces himself as a healing mage, the crowd starts making fun of him in that instant, calling him a shitty mage. Mina from the noble Liasya family decides to fight against him, thinking she might win against him easily, as he is one of the healing mages who fought against the demon army. Instead of leading her to the mock battle, Halfa himself decides to participate so that Usado can show everyone his true potential, knowing that he is the only one who can match against him. Q comes up to Usato, claiming that he should call off the mock battle as soon as possible since he doesn't want anything to happen to him, and Halfa isn't all nice as he looks. Usato wasn't ready to lose to anyone as long as he was wearing the uniform of the Kingdom Rescue Squad, knowing that he would get his ass beaten by the captain. His friends continued to cheer him up as soon as the battle began. Usado decides not to take on a weapon in his hands, and Suzune gets the duty of giving the signal, whilst Kiriha and Kyo stand afar worrying about Usado. As soon as the battle begins, Halfa instantly charges against him. Still, his opponent manages to dodge at the right time, surprising him. Usato is surprised to see his opponent this fast, as he has never fought against someone like him who existed outside the Kingdom Rescue Squad. It keeps getting hard for Usato to keep reading his moves as his aim is insane, making it harder than it looked for him. Knowing that the situation isn't improving even a bit, Usato starts fighting head-on with him while healing his hands simultaneously to avoid getting injured in the first place, which surprises Halfa. When he tears through the muscle of Usato, he decides to activate the healing protection over his whole body. He makes an overpowering punch to Halfa's stomach quite instantly. Everyone present around the whole venue was surprised to see the ability of Usato, even though he is someone who is a mere healing mage, including Mina, as she couldn't hold her anger bottled inside her. Halfa claims this might be the first time he felt he might die soon, but he was lucky enough to block his attack with something. Even though Halfa isn't ready to accept his loss, he stands on his feet again with both weapons in his hands, claiming that Usato's strength sincerely fascinated him, which he never anticipated would happen. The sole reason why he isn't ready to allow others to make fun of him while Usato keeps on thinking breaking his weapon might have been a mistake for him. Finally, Halfa is fully motivated to fight against him with his full strength after testing out the difference in their strength, while feeling bad for Usato for forcing him to fight against him. Then Usato is suddenly surprised when Halfa claims that provoking him into a fight is merely a job for him that cannot be avoided at any cost, as he doesn't have a proper explanation.